Have you seen these images of Iranian women from before 1979? You definitely must have. They surface on the internet time and again. Women in bikinis, women in western attires. These images are presented to draw a contrast with women's attire after the Islamic Revolution of 1979, covered by compulsory hijab, policed for immoral dressing. But these contrasts are deceiving. While women are forced to put on hijab under the current clergy rule, there was a time in Iran when women were not allowed to wear Islamic veils. Be it the shahs or the mullahs, Iranian women's clothing has always been dictated by the ruling men. Protests have swept across Iran. And women are leading the charge. Brave women of Iran. Calling for an end to compulsory hijab. They are tired of the morality police beating them up. They're fighting for freedom. In 1925, the last Shah of the Qajar dynasty was deposed by the Majlis. Reza Khan, then Prime Minister, is elected Shah. So after taking over Iran's reins, Reza Shah Pahlavi was ambitious to westernize the 2500-year-old Persian kingdom on similar lines to what its next-door neighbor, Turkey, was doing under Mustafa Kemal Pasha. One of the prominent decrees under Shah's effort to modernize Iran was passed in 1936. It was called Kashf-e-Hijab. This banned women from wearing Islamic veils. He saw it as a sign of progress. This is Susan Tehmasebi, an Iranian women's rights activist who has extensively worked towards gender issues at grassroots levels. Women, you know, they were they were forced to take off their hijab, and you know, and my like my grandmother was one of those people. I asked my father, what did she do, and she said. You know, he said, well, she would wear a hat. And we have this saying, like, if somebody puts a hat on you, that means that they've cheated you. So I really think that, you know, that really goes to show, I mean, a lot of women, you know, instead of wearing the adorable hijab, they would wear a hat to sort of observe what, you know, their whatever their religious beliefs were. But in a sense, it shows how women were cheated, you know, in that sense, that, you know, that the, their bodies, the way that they they dressed, their the, the control of their bodies became sort of a political tool where, politicians, you know, uh, express themselves and their policies uh, for that. And so this is, there's been a battle on this, I think, largely ever since. Enforcing Western clothing in a conservative society like Iran did not go down well. Clothing had become an issue which would drive the Iranian politics for the times to come. The Russians and the English invaded Iran the Shah himself abdicates and leaves the country. To ensure inner stability, the Crown Prince Muhammad Reza takes the oath as the new Shah. Reza Shah's son and successor, Muhammad Reza Pahlavi, lifted the ban on hijab and women were free to dress as per their choice. Female participation across different professions started to grow. Women had gained some rights. They weren't significant. If you compare it to now, maybe they weren't significant. But at the time, they were very significant. First of all, we got we had the right to vote, which is really significant. But there were other others. You know, they had rights to cust child custody, uh, rights to divorce, limitations on polygamy. You know, it was still a long way from equal rights, but there were important rights. The Shah continued to push for modernization of Iranian state and society. He introduced a series of reforms called the White Revolution, which aimed for economic growth through advancements in infrastructure and education. In the next 25 years, according to other people, I'm not saying that, will be among the five most prosperous countries of the world. Although the reforms meant that women enjoyed more rights, widespread discontentment started growing in the 1970s, owing to poverty and oppression inflicted by the corrupt Shah regime. Politically was very suppressed. This is Shahin Nawai, who was a professor in Tehran University in 1970s. I myself at that time as a very young girl in university, I, I was under watch of the Sabak. Why? Because I wanted to read different books. I didn't organize anything. I was not active in any political group. But they called me, the Sabak called me and tell me, we are watching you, you have to be careful. People's resentment turned into an uprising that overthrew the Shah, marking the end of 2,500 years of monarchy in Iran. The new religious government under Ayatollah Khomeini took down several laws of the Shah regime and women's rights were among one of the casualties. 
was a very conservative interpretation of Sharia law that was adopted that was adopted at the beginning of the revolution that you know reduced the age of marriage uh, for girls and for boys, which was eighteen to nine and fifteen. Um, so, which is in accordance to you know uh, 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 to is Islam interpretation of Islam. Uh, the age of girls has since been changed to thirteen, age of marriage for girls, but custody for custody for um, children went automatically to the to the men. Uh, you know, and women had more custody rights before. Uh, also, polygamy restrictions on polygamy were lifted. So it was a huge step in backwards. And we were, we were going forwards. I'm not saying that we we had all of our rights. We had some rights, but we lost those rights. And we took a giant leap backwards to 1400 years ago that had no, uh, you know, had no basis in reality, even for 1979. Then they passed a law for the compulsory hijab. Khomeini also said that, that the Reza Shah took the uh, hijab out and I'm going to put it on. And it means that both of them, they look at the women as, a, as a actually an object, not as a human being. The number of the people that they came to the protest against compulsory hijab. In um, uh, March 8, 1979, there was a lot of women also, they came with hijab and they said, we have hijab, but we are against the compulsory hijab. We had to wear scarf, um, scarves because otherwise we would get arrested and um, harassed in the street. Nasreen Parvaz became a women's rights activist in post-revolutionary Iran. She was sentenced to death in 1982, but was released after serving eight torturous years in prison. But women who were working, you know, in offices that they have to cover their hair, things like that. And so many women lost their job because they didn't want to accept that compulsory job. The mandatory hijab was enforced by a special force called the Morality Police. They monitored the dress code, makeup, appearance and behaviour of women in public places. Innumerable women faced harassment, penalisation and even death at the hands of Morality Police for inappropriate appearance. Iran had changed for women. I had grown up in a, you know, I was in Iran before that as a child where their hijab wasn't mandatory. But, you know, what I think is, I thought when I went to Iran that the most significant thing I would see, I would notice was, was hijab. I thought that this would be the most shocking thing for me visually, because perhaps I had seen more hijab than I had, than I remembered from, from my childhood, right? Uh, I remember I would have dreams about I would go, that I was out of the house without a hijab and it would stress me out. Like, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen to me? So this is a real fear. What happens if you lose your headscarf? You know, the wind blows it away. These are like, they're not, uh, you know, they're not uh, unusual fears that Iranian women have. And I had them as well, you know, or if we heard that there was, you know, police monitoring people's dress in whatever street, we would try to avoid it. I would see them and I would walk to the other side. I would make my head, scarf a little bit tighter. So it's very frightening and it's also very humiliating. It's very humiliating um, to have to do that. Over the years, Iranian women have rigorously fought for their rights, sustaining brutal crackdowns and even massacres. From the woman immolating herself for being dismissed from her job for non-adherence to hijab, to the women who disguise themselves as men to watch football match in the stadium where their entry was forbidden. And with the alleged custodial death of 22-year-old Mahasamini in 2022. Iranian women's rights movement have risen to unprecedented levels. No matter what, even if, you know, even if this is clamped down, it's going to be very hard to go back to the way that things were. You know, it's going to be very hard. We see these, this younger generation, they're high school girls. Who's going to tell them to put on their hijab?